on this for her birthday this year, right? What I did for the, I said, oh, boss, boss me, you know, because as I said, she loves a massage and all that. I organised, she went to uni in Cambridge, right? So I organised a little trip down to Cambridge where she was going to go, right? We are going to spend the Monday there in like a boss spa hotel, get all massaged and that together, like couples, lovely stuff and all that. And then go and have a spa, go and have a posh meal, had a full suite, champagne and all that stuff. It was going to be fucking phenomenal, right? She was dead happy with that. And then, but... I, I didn't know her back in uni what I did the, 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 for the next day. I tracked all her old uni friends down on Facebook, right? And I organised a big reunion party so she could go back and meet them all again. It was going to be fucking phenomenal. She was over the moon. I organised childcare. Perfect. They're good, right? Then about a week before, her mum was supposed to have the kids. She had a little bit of arthritis. Nothing too serious, but it flared up and she was like, I don't think I can have George. And I was like, she was gutted. Right? She was like, we can't go. And I was like, listen, babe. Already paid for it. You go. Take your cousin. Have a lovely time. Have the massages. Go and meet all your mates. You'll have, a, you'll have a boss party. I'll stay here. I'll look after the kids because I'm a dead nice fella. Thank you. Thanks, guys. And she did. She went and she had an amazing time. Uh, and then she came back and she felt a little bit guilty because I had missed out on this lovely trip. So... In order to make it up to me, she got me two days in the Lake District just fucking on me own. <laughs> Which, I mean, fucking pans is bad, but that's fucking up there, isn't it? Like, what the fuck are you... Like, I was just looking at her and she was like, you love that, won't you? And I was like, oh, what, the, what the fuck am I going to do by Lake Windermere on me own for two days? I had to go, mate, I had to go. I, I, I had to drive up to Lake Windermere like a fucking knob. Just, I mean, I ate, I ate all that shit. I got in there, right? And it was a lovely hotel, but that just fucking made it worse because it was like, it was exactly what I'd got here. It was like a boss couple's retreat, like a spa hotel. But I'm on my fucking own, and she got out of Groupon as well because she's fucking tight, right? <laughs> so all these fucking couples are queuing up because there was a fucking special offer on. So we're getting in there, there's like 10 couples in front of me, and I'm fucking stood there, and they're all like in front of me going, oh, this is going to be so nice, baby, isn't it? <laughs> all in love and kissing each other because they're away and I'm just fucking stood behind them just thinking this is going to be fucking shit this this is going to be fucking shit I'm going to spend the next two days listening to these shag through the fucking walls this is going to be fucking awful just to me me a big fat ginger knobhead eating fucking water to me on these just fucking can't even watch fucking Netflix because I haven't got a fucking iPad I was fuming because I, I like, I, I'm friendly, me. I quite like talking to people, but there was nobody there to start a conversation with because they're all in couples. You can't start muscling in on a couple's romantic getaway. You can't start splitting in the middle and go, oh, 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 you look like a fucking prick. So the only person in there that wasn't coupled up was the woman on the check in. Her name was Brenda. And to be fair, she was being dead friendly. She was like having banter with all the couples who were signing, telling them about all the activities couples' walks, couples' massages. I don't know what the fuck a couple's walk is, by the way. You have to hold hands all the way through it or something. I don't know. She's, she's having a lovely banter though, and I was thought, you know what, at least I'll get to talk to Brenda for a bit, I'll have a little bit of banter, break the day up a little bit. She waits me to turn in the queue, gets there, and as I got there, she had this smiley demeanor, she was like, and as soon as she saw me, she just went, like, it just changed, and she was like looking behind the desk like something was missing, and I was like, like she'd never seen a person on their own before. And I was like, oh yeah, and she went, are you traveling alone? And I went, yeah, and she went, oh, and she just slid the key across the desk to me. And I was like, oh, and I turned around and all these couples are just looking at me. And I, that was that, that point I realised what it was. Every couple in here who's been going, up, going out with each other for a long time, anything, not like a, anything above like five, six years will know what will happen is you, you've run out of shit to talk about. Like you can't, like if you go out on a date or you go out right together, you can't, like you can't be going, hey, this happened today because you'd be like, I know, I was fucking there, you prick. So you've got fuck all, really, to talk about. So what happens is you run out of shit. You run out of new information in about three minutes, and then you've got, you just sat there on this date or in this meal or whatever you are, and you just left to go, oh, my God, get on them over there. And you start people watching, you start looking at that in our bed. Oh, my God, why is she with him? Oh, my God, I bet you he's a fucking spy. They look like Father Christmas, don't they? <laughs> That's what you fucking do. And it's a natural thing to do, because what's happened is you know you're a knobhead, and she knows she's a knobhead, and she knows you're a knobhead, and you know she's a knobhead. But you've picked each other now, so now all you can do is try and prove that everyone around you is more of a knobhead than you. <laughs> Just to validate your life decisions. Yes, and I think it's a very healthy thing to do, and I think we all do it. That being said, 
Now I'm king fucking nobbit of this hotel because I'm the only fucking twat on his own. And I'm stood there like a fucking prick and they're all looking at me going, oh my God, why would you be on, a, on your own in a couple's hotel? And they're all whispering to each other going, oh my God, I bet he cheated on his missus. Bet he cheated on his missus. Look at him, the fat nobbit. He's cheated on his missus, hasn't he? Look at that gauzy ginger prick. He's cheated on his missus, I bet you. Look, he's, oh, he's still come on the jiffy. He's fucking horrible him. I hate him. I was fucking fuming, you know, and I, I, mean, I just grabbed my key and I was like, I'm not fucking staying in here. When I stuffed my stuff in my room and I just marched out the hotel, I thought I'm going to get pissed. Walked into this little village called Bonest, started getting fucking smashed on my own like a tit. Got absolutely, mate, I started drinking lager, then I saw the fella drinking red wine and for some reason I was like, I can be someone who drinks red wine, I'm going to fucking reinvent myself. Because <laughs> I was on my own. I thought that was, because I was like, can I have a Merlot please? You got like a bottle of Merlot with a fucking fish bowl to drink it out. I was like, glug, 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 glug. ooh, that's cheeky. Glug, glug, glug. Mate, I was drinking it like it was lager, and that is not lager, mate. <laughs> it fucking walloped me. I know I was. The only reason I know I was smashed is because there's a picture of me on the floor in Bowness from 6:30 p.m. that night, just fucking spark out, just like, <laughs> just covered in chips and half a fish. Was like, <laughs> which is bad. But I was on my own. Who the fuck took that picture? <laughs> I woke up the next day in my room, and I was like. <gasps> Fucking, you know, when you panic, wake up, and you're like, oh, fuck, what happened? And you're still in your clothes and that, you're all sweaty, and you're like, oh, fucking hell. And I jumped out of the bed, and I looked at myself in the mirror, I had purple teeth in that, and I was like, oh. Oh, no, that was bad. That went wrong. That went wrong fast. I'm looking now for all my stuff, and the thing I was panicking about the most was, right, when I first got given this gift, as I said, she's got a track record of giving, of giving bad gifts, and I was like, I can't, I, I was like, oh, this is fucking shit again, but then I thought, you know what, I am going to make the most of it. This Tuesday, I was there the Monday night, there the Tuesday, and this Tuesday was going to be the only day in five years that there was no chance I was going to have to look after the kid. There was absolutely no possibility of it. So, the thing about me that some of you all know, some of you might not know, that you should know, is that I quite like smoking weed. Right. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Some of you might not like it, some of you might like it. I don't give a fuck, but... Yeah. Yes, my brother. Legalize it. <laughs> <laughs> Thing is, though, as, as I said, I've got to be up at like six o'clock every morning, so I can't really do it that much anymore because, especially the green, I can't like, because it's not conducive to a weed. Any weeds, any regular weed smoker who's getting up at six o'clock in the morning is having half a joint that he left from last night and going straight back to fucking sleep, mate. I can't do that shit, so I've got to kind of leave, I've got to lay off it a little bit, but. This, as I said, this day is good. It's the first day in, in, in years. There's, there's no chance I'm going to have to look after the kids so far. So I'm going to get myself a big fat fucking bag of green. I got myself new walking boots. I got myself one of those coats that folds up into its own hood. <laughs> and I thought, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get me fucking. I'm going to get me. I'm going to get me weed. I'm going to get me boots on. I'm going to get me coat. I'm going to walk. I was right on the edge of Lake Windermere. I thought, I'm going to get me stuff, I'm going to walk. The edge of the lake spoke with the edge of this, like, stages as I got down to it. And I walked along, I walked along it about a mile, right? And I found, well, I, t I have to, like, I need you to focus because I need to explain what I found. I found this little cove, right? And it's just a little log, right? About that high. Just, just being felled for me. It was beautiful. It was, like, perfect, right? I sat on it. It was like, there was even a little bum groove in it. I was like, ooh. It was like fucking Ikea had made it, right? And what I could see was this, right? As I said, edge of, the sta ed edge of the lake is about where the edge of the stage is. Just about an inch deep, perfect crystal clear water, just lapping against the pebbles, just like. <laughs> just, two just two trees just framing this shot, just like whistling in the breeze. <laughs> perfect blue sky. Sun just cracking through the leaves on this side, just, just caressing my face. Ah. Four little ducks. Just playfully. Wah, 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 wah. It was beautiful, it was magical, it was serene, it was perfect, it was so silent, it was, it was amazing. Got my skins out, I got my weed out, started rolling this joint. I put like half a bag of green in this joint because I thought I'm only here for a day and I've got, I've got a full bag of green. I put it in, start rolling it up, I light it. As of, and as, because I hadn't smoked green for a while, it just hit me straight away, right? And it, as I said, it was already one of the most beautiful things I'd seen in a long time, but it was like someone put a fucking Instagram filter on it. It was amazing. It was like, <laughs> like the greens became b greener, the blues became blue, the fucking ducks became ducky, and it was mad. <laughs> I was just looking around going, oh, this is amazing. I had another pull of the joints, and I was like, oh, I just felt so relaxed and so peaceful. I was just, I was like, oh, oh my God, you know what, babe? I've been slagging you off because it's another shit gift, but you know what? You were right. I have made the most. I know she couldn't hear me, but I felt like I needed to tell her in the moment. <laughs> so I 
was like, I'm so sorry for slagging you off all the time. I had another pull of the joint, and I was like, oh, this is so good. I don't, I don't ever want to leave this place. This is perfect. Oh, I had another, oh, that fourth pull, I was like, oh, 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 my God, I'm more stoned than I've ever been in my life. And it just fucking hit me like a ton of bricks, and I was like, <gasps> And the fucking trees just started trying. I was like, ah! oh my God. And the ducks was like, whoa, 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 whoa. And me le- I couldn't move my legs, but my legs were moving, right? And I was like, oh my God. And they were just sliding forward. And I was like, who the fuck's moving my legs? And the lake's like there. And I'm, I was like an inch deep, but I was convinced I was going to drown this lake. I was like, oh my God, I'm going to drown the lake. Oh my God. <gasps> oh shit, I'm going to drown the lake. Oh please. Hey ducks, can you please get me out of this lake? Have a go in the lake, please. Please, I know I'm, I know I'm big, but like, there's fucking four of you just get a corner each other sort of a fuck's sake. Just fucking use your... And then I got, I, and then I got really, I had guilty because I, I realised I'm, I'm in this duck's house and it's fucking Tuesday morning. <laughs> He's just trying to get the kids ready for school, do you know what I mean? I'm like, oh my, oh, mate, I'm so sorry about this. I'm a stay-at-home dad myself, you know, you're just trying to get the kids ready for school. And I know it's how you can't find the flippers and shit and I'm all over the fucking, I'm just fucking your morning. I'm not normally like this, mate, I've, just, I've had too much green. I don't normally smoke this, is what happened. And I've smart, I've put too much in, I've been, Billy, I've, I've been Billy Big Bollocks and I'm fucking... And then I had another pull of the joint to try and calm myself down. That was, that was a fucking terrible idea. So my heart rate just went... Whoosh. And the thing, as I said, I quite like my gadgets and I've got this, I've got this Apple Watch, right? An amazing feature of this Apple Watch is that if your heart rate goes over 140 and, and you're not active, your watch goes, hey, you're having a heart attack, you know? Which is an amazing feature if you're having a heart attack. It is save lives, but if you're having a fucking panic attack because you smoke too much green next to Lake Windermere, it's a fucking terrible feature because you're like, oh my God, I'm having a fucking heart attack. I can feel it, I've got pins and needles, oh my God. And my leg, I can't move my legs because I'm having a heart attack and I'm gonna drown the lake. This is the worst fucking death. And no one's ever gonna find me out you fucking stupid bitch. This is what you fucking wanted, isn't it? Why do you keep getting me shit gifts, you fucking nubbin? to smoke weed like it wasn't I don't know what the fuck they're putting in this shit now but when I used to smoke it what happened was me and my mates like me the, 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 me and five of my mates and you throw a quid in each right and you go you go to the dodgy fella by your house and you'd buy a fucking five as like rocky fucking hash like fucking the thinnest little strip of rocky you could fucking slice off and canny farm like wow yes yes my brothers and sisters and you'd use the other palm to go to fucking mobile by your house, the mobile shop. And you'd buy, you'd buy four loose ciggies and a packet of skins because they'd sell it to 12 year olds. And it was a fucking team building experience, mate, because you'd have to find like a windbreaker to go and build a joint behind. You'd find like, the, you'd go behind the flats like, and you'd be like that. And one of you'd be like holding it like this. Whoever had the smallest little dainty hands would be burning in, like being dead conservative with it. Like, Everybody would be like fucking sick burning in that. Whoever had the biggest Helly Hansen coat would be like that. <laughs> Providing cover. It fucking brought people together though. It was like you had to wait. It was like doing the fucking Duke of Edinburgh award, mate. <laughs> and you'd, you'd build it and you'd pass it round. You'd have a couple of pulls each, two pull pass, and you'd get a bit stoned. You'd talk some shit. You'd get sober again. You'd, 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 you'd do another one in half an hour. It was sample. This shit. I've never fucking known anything like I went up and I don't know what the fuck they're putting in it. I went up and down and up and down. My legs wouldn't work. I was, I was fucking like my heart rate was racing. I was, uh, and then a symptom I didn't even know we could do. Something I've never experienced from me in my life. Something I've never even heard of, right? I became more horny than I have ever been <laughs> in my entire life. Like to the point where it was lucky my legs wouldn't work because if they could have, I'd have fucked the duck. I'd have been getting a fucking wing job at least. <laughs> I was so horny, it was to the point where as, as a full girl, a 36 year old man with two kids, I fully considered getting naked by Lake Windermere and having a wank. <laughs> like I fully considered it and I didn't do it, but it wasn't any moral consideration. I didn't come to my senses and go, come on, Paul, for fuck's sake, mate, you're a fucking grown man. You've got two kids, you're 36 years of age. You can't get naked by Lake Windermere and have a wank. Can't do it. Wasn't that. 
what it was, I, was, I, I couldn't move my legs, so I was trying to get my kicks off. <laughs> and I glanced up, and about, it must have been about a mile, mile and a half in the distance, just this little dot just made out like a little house, and I was like, <gasps> Nah, there's someone watching me in that house, you know. <laughs> Donald! <laughs> hey, Donald, who lives in that house, lad? Are they looking at me? I feel like they're looking at me, you know. They're looking at me, aren't they? Why are you looking at me, lad? If you've been so stoned, you try and zoom in with your own eyes. Look at me all you want, mate. I'll be able to fucking see you in a minute. I don't know fuck. <laughs> 35 minutes I was there. And to be honest with you, I think I could... I, I might still be there to this day if it wasn't for the fact that adrenaline kicked in, fight or flight, because, and I shit you not, this happened, two Japanese tourists just happened upon me. <laughs> and for some reason, my legs just took that as a signal to go, <gasps> Leggy! And he fucking... Because my stone brain was convinced they were the police. <laughs> like, that made total sense to me at the time. Like, of course the police aren't putting undercover Japanese tourists <laughs> on the coast of Lake Windermere at 8 o'clock on a Tuesday morning to tackle the cannabis problem. <laughs> but that, it just made sense to me. I, made, I fucking legged it all, all the way back to... I legged it all the way back to the hotel. As I said, it was a lovely hotel. And it wasn't until I got to the big glass doors of the foyer and I was like, I realised it still had the drink to me and then I was like, oh, for fuck's sake. And I put it in my pocket and I was like, oh, my God, I can't go back in this hotel. I fucking stink of weed. Oh, my God, I fucking... Oh, my God, do you already think I'm a fucking weirdo? This is terrible, this. And I'm looking in the foyer and I'm like, there's couples in the foyer and I'm thinking, come on, just all fuck off so I can go to my room, please. I just need to go to my room, please. Just... And, but, the longer I was there, the more couples were just congregating, and I'm just looking at them all going, why the fuck are you all here? Brenda told you about all the activities. Go on a couple's walk, have a massage, go back to your room and shag. Why are you all here? It makes no sense. What I hadn't considered was the fact that a six-foot fat ginger lad pressing his face against the glass of the hotel. <laughs> just fucking stoned. Just, you all need to fuck off. I want to go back to my room. That tends to attract the crowd. Now, I'd, I'd attracted every couple in the hotel. They're all stood in the foyer going, oh, my God. I know he cheated on his bed and that, but I feel bad for him now. <laughs> so I couldn't go back in the hotel. I couldn't go back in. I had to go back to my car in the car park, right? And just, I had to just sit in my car. Couldn't, couldn't drive anywhere. Just sit there with my hands on the steering wheel, just breathing. <laughs> just trying to calm myself down. Just trying to get my heart rate down, just like... Just listening to Smooth FM. It's like now I'm so in love with you. Whatever you wanna do is all I really need. <laughs> Managed to calm down, I managed to get my heart rate down. I was like, just managed to get my hands off the steering wheel. I was like, oh, okay. Al Green to calm me down. I was like, okay. Oh, we're all right, 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 we're all right. Oh, we're calm, we're calm, we're calm. Then I just had a wank in my car. <laughs> I did. You know what? I did. And you know what? I'm not even embarrassed about it because it was one of the best wanks I have ever had in my entire life. It was fucking phenomenal. Like, I, I had been saving it up for weeks. You know, like, when you spit on your hand and that, and it makes that... <laughs> and it wasn't even, like, a functional wank. It wasn't even just like I was trying to get through it. I got fucking playful with that shit. I was like, switching grips off. I look, little backhand. <laughs> little two fingers on the tip. Ooh, Paul, stop it. Cheeky bastard. <laughs> little play with me Gucci you now. Slip a finger up the bum. Stop it, Paul. Don't even like that. <laughs> Fucking ruin my car. <laughs> I, had, I had proper wank come down as well. I was like, ha, 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 you start biting your lip and you're like, hmm. Hmm. Mmm. No, oh, stop it, stop it, stop it. 
Open my eyes slowly. It was like, oh, it's better. Oh, oh. Whew. Just looked up. Just let the world back in. It was like, oh. fucking Brenda stood outside my cow in there. <laughs> just, just fucking stood there though. I don't know how long she'd been there. Just watching me have a wank in my car, which I think makes her the fucking weirdo. <laughs> and I won't lie to you, it was one of the lowest, most embarrassing moments of my entire life, but I think there's only so much embarrassment a human being can take before you push your lucky window down with your little finger that isn't covered in jizz and just go, <laughs> what, Brenda? <laughs> what? Yes, I was having a wank in my car because I cheated on me missus and I'm fucking lonely, mate. What do you want, just fucking Seagull and Brenda? What? <laughs> <laughs> fucking Brenda storming away like, I don't think that's very appropriate behaviour. <laughs> Fuck off, Brenda. <laughs> and I won't lie, like, in some perverted way, I felt like I'd won that. Like, I felt like I'd worked, because I stood up for myself. I was like, well, then, Paul, you didn't fucking let you stood your ground there, me, you know what I mean? And then, for about a minute, I did that, and, until I realised that I can never go back in that hotel ever again. <laughs> like, you can't, can't, you can, you can't style that shit out after half an hour. You can't just walk in half an hour later and go, <laughs> you're right, Brenda? It's <laughs> <laughs> fucking mad that before, wasn't it? <laughs> I did I get you? I'm, so, I'm fucking, I, I, I got carried away, but I'm so sorry. I fucking, it's honestly, send me the bill, and I'll fucking clean that for you, means I'm so sorry. I can't do that shit. So I had to just go home. I had to just go home. I had to drive home a fucking day early. I had to wait to sober up, drive home, get home. I, oh, I mean, I was fucking fuming because it was just, it pissed me off. All the driving pissed me off. And I got in there and she's there with the kids and she's like, oh, what the fuck are you doing here? And I was like, oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, God. All right. Oh, this is embarrassing. Um, oh, I'm not going to lie to you. I just missed you and the kids so much. <laughs> she ran over, she was like, oh, babe, that's so nice. You shouldn't have come back. I was like, I couldn't do it, babe. I couldn't stay away another day. It was just, I missed you so much. She was like, oh, that's so lovely. She gave me a big kiss and that. I was like, she went, weird though, because a woman called Brenda phoned from the hotel. <laughs> and she said that you left in such a hurry after the incident in the car park that you left your luggage in your room. She's asked if you could go back and get it or they'd destroy it. And I was like, oh, fuck. So I had to drive back to the fucking lakes. Like a fucking knobhead. I was like, this is a fucking shit gift, this. <laughs> and I forgave her for that, Connor. <laughs> I let that shit go, mate. And still, 26 